Well, I do appreciate this opportunity to give my testimony about tithing. Um, uh, as I told you earlier, I've been a member about nine years now. I came from a church um, where tithing was always talked about. Um, but I didn't participate. More or less, I call myself tipping God, gave him what was ever left over. Um, when I got to Friendship West and uh, a little bit intimidated because I'm not used to such a large church, but I was blown away by what this church did, you know, what it does outside of the church, how it helps the community. And I just got to the point where Pastor, well, I said like this, there was a sermon about 10, 10, 80s, saving 10, tithing 10, and um, living off of 80, and it just stuck like glue to me. Uh, I didn't have any more excuses not to get, to pay my tithes, you know. It was so easy for me to spend money on the weekend on other things and then just kind of give God what was left over. And I'm like, that's not how he's been blessing me. So uh, by the grace of God and by making a commitment to him, I've committed to, I could say maybe in the last six years, you know, just giving it right off the top. Uh, I love that there's so many ways to give now. As soon as it in my account, I go online and give my uh, my tithe and my offering, and um, and it just makes me excited. God has been so good to me, and my tithing for me is more or less letting God know that I I believe you and I put you first. Um, tithing is personal. I do believe that, and it's definitely a conversation that you want to have. But what I've gotten from tithing is this miraculous relationship with God. Uh, he's there. Uh, it's not that I'm living off of someone else's testimony. I mean, I can go count the row. I got the receipts, as some would say, on how he's blessed me. Um, I have some health issues, but by the grace of God, I'm here. Um, my home was a fixer-upper, and I got a 15-year mortgage on it with the help of my brother. And just three months ago, my brother came. I had 11 years left on my mortgage. And three months ago, my brother said, I just paid your mortgage off. Didn't see that coming. Um, the way he blesses us, it's like you know it that is him, you know? And I... I can face anything, you know, because, and it doesn't mean that when you tie, you're not going to have heartache or trouble. Heartache is coming. Trouble will come, but you're not alone. When I say trust the process and trust God to be there, and it's just like I study more, I read more, because I feel his presence. And I would love for everybody to experience that. And when Pastor talked about all ties Sunday, sow that seed. Trust the process. You know, what you're going to gain from that, you won't be able to even imagine it or see it coming. You know, if I not open the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing, there should not be room enough to receive it. I'm, I'm on the other end of that. It's just... I love him, and you know, and I will say trust him, and again, trust the process, uh, have that conversation. I know it can be hard when you're a single parent and, uh, you know, the pandemic, you know, may have hurt your finances. Just commit to the giving, uh, whether it's 5%, 10%, do it on a regular basis and be a cheerful giver and his blessings oh my god you know my mark is just one of the blessings you know i have many more but it's just he's oh god I, i'm almost gonna tear up here but i just trust him and it's just faith in believing and praying and know that he is real so i do encourage you to have that conversation with yourself 
and read about it if you want to understand what tithing in and giving and faith and how it is to be able to help those that can't help themselves. I want to be a part of that. You know, how we feed the homeless, not just during the holiday season, but throughout the year, how we give out scholarship. I feel grateful that I'm a part of that because of my giving. So that's why I give and gladly to do so. My name is Sonia Patrick and I tithe. Good morning, Friendship West. Good morning, Friendship West. I am glad to be here this morning to welcome you all. My name is Gloria Shellman. I am with the Faith Formula Human Services, and this is Brother Jeff Larry. He's with On a Mission Ministry. We are just excited and delighted to be here this morning to welcome you all. This is first Sunday in October. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm glad that we made it to the first Sunday in October. It is also All Tide Sunday, so make sure that you give God a try this morning because you cannot beat God giving. I know for myself, you can't beat God giving, so make sure that you, when the offering comes around, that you make sure that you tithe the tenth off the top. It is also Communion Sunday. Communion Sunday, those of you that are online, we welcome you, and we uh, ask that you go ahead and get your elements together for Communion Sunday so that when it is that time, you can commune with us here. We are just grateful and excited to be here this morning, and Brother Jeff is going to lead us in prayer. Good morning, Friendship West. My name is Brother Jeff. I'm with Honor Mission Ministry, and I'd like to ask you to have in your mind, in the back of your minds, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, sovereign Lord, our God, holy, holy, holy is your name. Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we come thanking you for that name. Oh, how we thank you, sovereign Lord, for Jesus. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for us, all that you do to us, all that you do through us, all that you do for ours, which are yours. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. We thank you, Father, for this place, your house of prayer, that we can come and worship you. We thank you so much. We thank you and we lift up those who come today. We lift up those who are online. We lift up those who are members of Friendship West. We lift them to you, Father. We lift up everyone who has come in this house of prayer on today. We lift up all the different ministries, Sovereign Lord. We lift them to you. We lift up everyone who labors in this house of prayer. We lift up all the different ministry leaders. We lift them to you. We lift up all the staff pastors, all who play the instruments. We lift up everyone who comes faithfully to serve you, Sovereign Lord. We thank you for how you you bless us and come to worship you. Now, now, Father, we want to lift up those who are on the staff, all the staff pastors. We lift them to you, Father, and we thank you for how they bless us, how they keep us, how they pour into us. We thank you for their faithfulness, Father, and we want to lift up, Father, the angel of this house of prayer. Oh, how we thank you, Lord. Oh, how we thank you for how you use and how you're speaking to, how you're blessing people through our senior pastor, Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III. We thank you, Sovereign Lord, for him. We thank you for how you have promoted him, how you are using him, how you have blessed him, and you blessing others through him. Continue to speak to him, Father. Continue to mold him, Father. Continue to bless him. Continue to protect him and continue to to protect his, which are yours. We thank you for his family. We thank you for his daughter. We thank you for the first lady. We thank you for his mother. We thank you for him and those who you have blessed to be around him. And now, Father, we want to lift up some who never
ever who rarely gets lifted to you. We lift up those who come today who are in pain. They're in so much pain, Lord, that they wanted to come to your house of prayer on today. The enemy has chased them in here. And so, enemy, you have messed up on today because they have made it to the house of prayer. And so thank you, Lord. Those who are online, Father, who are crying out to you, we pray, Father, that you will hear their cry. There are those who are struggling, Father, those who have mental issues, those who are being raped, easy and ass, I pray. There are those who are, are hurting, Father, we lift them to you. Our phone, sovereign Lord, or is about to go off because somebody has just gotten snatched off the street. And so, Father, the Amber Alert is about to sound even now, and we pray for them. Father, that you will have mercy on them, have mercy on those who are in their family. We stand in need of you, Father, for you to have mercy on us. Help us, Father, far be it from us to come to your house of prayer and not pray for others. And so, Father, have mercy on us. Search even us right now. Search our hearts and our minds, Father, individually. Mold us and shape us. Far be it from us to come here and not want to be in the truth, not want to tell the truth. Have mercy on us. Start right now, Father, with us to do what is upright and pleasing in your sight. Yes, Lord, may we pray for others, even our enemies. These are not our words. You have said pray for our enemies and do good to them that we may be children of, of our Father. And so have mercy on us, Father. May we be found faithful. May we be found praying for you. May we be found praying for others, Father. So in the name of Jesus, just have your way on today. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. 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 I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're going to sing a song to say, come on in the room. That's how we used to do it back in Mississippi.
Break it down, break it down, break it in. Because we 
give God praise if we know that prayer will fix it and we have a duty to lift him up how to reach the masses the men of every birth for an answer Jesus gave the key he said if I would be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men all women all people unto me in the church would say, lift the Savior up. Come on and lift the Savior up. For he speaks from eternity. And his message is the same, that if I would be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men and women unto me. We come now to this sacred moment of communion. We enter it prayerfully. Yeah. We enter it reflectively. We enter it remembering what God has done. Right. For those of you who are joining us online, we ask that you would grab your elements, your bread, your juice, as we prepare to gather together to remember Christ's death on the cross. A death that liberates us from sin. Not simply the sin that reigns and rules in the hearts of men. But that death empowers us to challenge the sin without. Structures of evil, interlocking systems of oppression. As we come now, we remember what the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Beginning at verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this ye do also, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye drink this bread, uh, drink this cup and eat of this bread, you show the Lord's death until he come again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a man, let a woman examine his or herself. And so let them eat of that bread and drink of that cup let us take a moment for pausing to reflect to examine ourselves so that we might not take of the lord's body and blood unworthily
Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was broken, broken to remind us that we are worthy, that we are worth it, that we are enough. Let us eat together. symbol of Christ's shed blood, that new covenant shed to remind us that God loves you just as you are, how you are, where you are. Let us drink together. Let us pray, God our Father, thank you for the symbols of your broken body and your shed blood. Thank you, Lord, for the message and the meaning of this meal. May it empower us to live and to die as you lived and died. May it empower us and embolden us to do the work of ministry, to make the kingdom arrive on earth as it already exists in heaven. This is our prayer this day. In the name of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, According to your word, amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's some good news right there. That's some good news right there. You ain't in this thing by yourself. That's some good news right there. Folk may walk out on you, but your heavenly Father is watching over you. Some folk are coming for you, but what they don't understand is when they come for you, your heavenly Father is watching over you. I guess I ain't got no witnesses in the house who can testify if it had not been that the Lord was on my side. I, I think I got some witnesses at least over here who are ready to testify. I trust in God. I know God cares for me. On mountain land or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, God keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. Ah, uh, y'all gotta forgive me, but I'm kind of feeling that right there. To know that God got me. God's got you. I'm gonna come over and talk to y'all because they didn't get it. God's got you. I'm going to talk to y'all right quick. God got you. I think y'all already know it. God got you. God got you. God cares for you. God is concerned about you. God knows what you're going through. My heavenly father watches over me. God, thank you for that good news. Thank you for watching over us. 
looking out for us, taking care of us, being better to us than we even deserve. Thank you for your extravagant, unconditional love. Thank you for being so trustworthy and so faithful that we can testify we trust in God because we know you care for us. No matter what may come, no matter where life takes us, we know that 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 you care for us. So thank you for caring for us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for loving us so much that you have ordered our steps and stops into this encounter with you. And now, God, we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, God, what shall we do? So please, rescue me from me. Hide me behind the cross and help us to see Jesus. Speak to us. You know where we are, who we are, what we're up against, what we're going through, what we need. We need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, God, what shall we do? Speak, Lord. We're listening. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you praise God with me for our music ministry blessing us? Thank you. Thank you. Powerful. Powerful. Love y'all. Thank you. Our scripture theme for this month is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And it reads, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text, and for a few moments, I want to talk about developing beautiful pictures from your darkest negatives. Developing beautiful pictures from your darkest negatives. To be sure, Biggie is on point when he says, no, testifies. You're right, I like the life I live. I went from negative to positive. And yet, Big would also honestly testify that in the equation of this thing called life, there are those dark days and nightmarish nights where we testify that in the equation of life, it seems as if the sum total is negative. Right. Negative. Negative. Ida B. Wells worked so hard to liberate this country from the sickness within itself that caused it to have no accountability for the lynching of black bodies that according to the songstress Billie Holiday hung as strange fruit from southern trees. Of course, we recognize that between what, 1870 and 1950, some 4,000 lives were snatched because of the terrorism of racism manifest in the brutality of lynching. And my sisters and brothers, Ida Wells, fighting for us, lost a court case. And when she lost the court case, listen to her depiction of life's equation going negative. She writes in her diary, I felt so disappointed for my people generally. I have, I have firmly believed all along that the law was on our side and would, when we appealed to it, give us justice. I feel shorn of that belief and utterly discouraged. And now, if it were possible, 
would gather my race in my arms and fly away with them. Oh God, is there no redress, no peace, no justice in the land for us? Ida B. Wells had experienced life not just being unjust, but downright unfair. And it caused her at the end of her Per, in, at, at the end of her piece in her diary to simply turn to God raising questions is there no justice is there no peace she reaches the point where she feels like the psalmist who declared that if I had the wings of the dove I would fly away and be at rest don't judge Ida don't judge the psalmist because if you live long enough and life goes negative enough, you will reach a point where you will just want to say, you know what, forget it. If I had my way, I would fly away to get some kind of peace, to get some kind of justice, because life, my sisters and brothers, can be downright negative. I won't forget, I won't forget, since I'm being honest right now, that, that, that this really is not just a preachment for me, it's a testimony I fully resonate with. The year 2007 was a whack, horrific year in the biography of my own experience. Check out what happened in April of that year. My best friend, Marvis P. May, his dad passed away. And then my sisters and brothers, within a week, my beloved aunt, Sarita Lattimore, she made her triumphant transition. There's a lot of death that is going on. Wait, that's not the end of the story. By November, Marvis, who had just turned 47, our birthdays, three days apart, Marvis P. May, my sisters and brothers, the week of Thanksgiving, also experienced his own exit from earth to eternity. Within a matter of months, I have lost people that were significant in my life. And as a consequence, all I could say is that my life, I'm remixing Biggie, had gone from positive to negative. Let me park right there, lest you judge me, because all of us, if you live long enough, regardless of how big your Bible may be and how many tongues you can speak in other than English will testify that you've had some dark days that are the result of going from positive to negative. Negative in the equation of this thing called life. Well, check out what happened. And I had to preach my best friend's funeral, one of the most difficult funerals I've ever had to preach other than my grandmother's and my beloved aunt's. And here I am having to preach his funeral. I'm flying back to Dallas, getting ready, of course, to come to church. And my sisters and brothers, as I'm flying back to Dallas, I'm on a plane and, and the brother sitting next to me, I won't forget him. His name is Wayne. That's all I remember. I did didn't get his last name, but I won't forget our conversation. Wayne looked at me, and check out what Wayne said. Wayne, finally, we're up in the air. We've taken off. Wayne has looked at me several times without saying anything. You know me by now. I'm not trying to have a conversation, especially after just having preached my best friend's funeral. But look at Wayne, as Wayne evidently can't help himself, and Wayne said, as you look like you just lost your best friend. And when he said that, I said, really? I did. And he said, what do you mean? I told him I had just preached my best friend, Marvis May's funeral. He profusely apologized. I said, no worries. Let's just enjoy this flight and hope we land safely. That's when he said to me, if you would notice, I look like I lost my best friend too. Well, of course, I didn't notice because I was 
wrapped up in the negatives of my own sorrow, grief, and heartbreak. I think I'll park right there because if you're not careful, you'll miss out on the fact that everybody you meet is dealing with some kind of burden, some kind of brokenness, some kind of pain that we know nothing about. That's why you've got to be careful about taking stuff personal because you never know what a person is going through. You never know what they're up against, what they're dealing with. Listen, you're in church and there's somebody on your row and their testimony is you don't know what hell I had to overcome just to get to church this day. I'm not just talking to folk in the house. There's somebody online and if you're honest with yourself, I'm in your Kool-Aid. I've called out your flavor and your deal is this. I'd like to get to church but I ain't feeling like being around people today because of how I'm feeling and what I'm dealing with. And if you're honest with yourself, all of us are carrying some kind of a load. Check this. The brother then tells me he had lost his best friend. I said, I'm sorry. He said, no worries, just as you said. But he said, my best friend was my beloved mother. And not only did I lose my mother, but one week after my mother was buried, I also had to deal with my dog getting hit by a car. My dog was 15 years old. Don't laugh. I said, I understand. I had a dog that was my favorite as well. I get it. I said, God bless you. I'm praying for you. He said, well, let me share with you something that may indeed bless both of us. I said, cool, go ahead. And y'all, this is what he shared. It so blessed my life. I had to download it on my mental computer and now I'm about to oratorically and sermonically print y'all a copy. Check out Wayne's testimony. Wayne testified that while he was while he was in, watch this, his season of recovery from the grief of losing mom and his dog, it dawned on him that his mother, a photographer, had left him her camera and so he decided after going through a series of grief counseling sessions, his grief counselor said that why don't you take a trip, go someplace beautiful, use your mother's camera to take some pictures. That's what Wayne did. Wayne says he went what he went to Madagascar off the coast, of course, of Mother Africa. Madagascar, he said, is resplendently beautiful. Madagascar, he testified, is aesthetically eye arresting and eye massaging. It blows your mind to see how beautiful the area is. And check out what Wayne testified. Wayne said he's with he's with a group that is taking a tour of the wildlife there on the island of Madagascar and somehow while he was taking pictures he got lost from the tour group that he was with and he's lost from the tour group he's with and then he's taking pictures says I may not I may as well not waste this time he takes a picture but when he took a picture watch this he slipped and fell on his back and then he said I'm not sure of your name I said Freddie he said Freddie I fell on my back and when I fell on my back with the camera in my hand all of a sudden the clouds burst and out of nowhere a storm came that was unexpected I said hold on are you trying to make me feel better because this story ain't working right now and, and my sisters and brothers, I think I should stop right there because look at Wayne. The metaphor is powerful. He's in a beautiful place and a storm breaks out going from positive to negative. I'm not done. Wayne gets lost from the group that he's with. He's not where he should be. And all of a sudden, while taking a photograph,
breath, he falls back and then the clouds open and a storm hits him while he is flat on his back. Do you get the metaphors I'm trying to share with you right now? He's on his back and that's bad enough, but not only is he on his back, but unexpectedly, out of nowhere, a storm breaks out and Wayne, watch this, is hit with the rain pellets and on top of that, he gets drenched by the rain that is coming down so fast. Wayne went from positive to negative. I think I'll, I'll stop and unpack that because that, my sisters and brothers, is life. Note the metaphor. On the one hand, he's in a beautiful place, but something ugly takes place. I think I'll park right there. That's negative because for some of you, what started out to be a beautiful love thing, all of a sudden went real wrong and someone you fell in love with, you discover they let you go and you fail by yourself and now your heart is broken. I can't stop there because it also dawned on me that Wayne is not where he should be because he's disconnected. He's all alone. Have you ever felt that way in this thing called life? Listen, you can be around a lot of people and still feel by yourself. Listen, you can find yourself in situations where you feel lonely though there's a crowd around you. Somebody is in this church filled with people but guess what? There's something in you that feels isolated and by yourself negative. Wait, I'm not even done it because Wayne testified that he fell back while trying to take a picture. He falls back and when he's down, that's when a storm breaks out. Uh-oh, I like that right there. While he's down, a storm breaks out. Have you ever felt that way? You're already down and then life gets worse and a storm breaks out. What could go wrong does go wrong. Shakespeare put it like this. Trouble seldom come as single century men. They come in battalions. When it rains, it pours. He's flat on his back. A storm breaks out and God brought somebody to church or had somebody tune in and that's exactly where you are. A storm is broken out while you're already feeling down. If that's the case, understand what's happening to the original audience that received the book of Chronicles or the series of stories or narratives or histories that were compiled by a chronicler in the woman's Bible commentary they state that the context is that this is probably a writer during the Persian uh, during the Persian oppression of the people of God who finds her, her or himself, watch this, somewhere in a section an impoverished section of the Persian Empire and it is not just impoverished but guess what, the people, they feel marginalized, they feel othered as they are a part of the vastness of the Persian Empire and then Judy Fentress Williams she insightfully interprets in her amazing piece on holy imagination that evidently the book of for the books of first and second chronicles they are remixes of Samuel and Kings stay with me now because Samuel and Kings are telling a history watch this that starts with Samuel in a real sense and moves through the beginning of the monarchy where the people of God insisted on having a king to reign over them. And so we see that in Samuel and we see that in Kings. But the chronicler decides to remix the story, to remix the history and tell the history from her or his perspective. And watch what the chronicler does. It makes me want to shout right quick because the chronicler in essence is saying, uh, according to Judy Fentress Williams, she writes that this is diaspora literature. This is protest literature. This is literature coming from, watch this, the outskirts, some small section 
protection of a, a vast Persian empire. But Judy Fentress Williams says that the chronicler wants the people of God to know how they got where they are, that they can then find a pathway forward. Let me park right here and give you time to shout. First, Judy Fentress Williams is saying this is protest literature. It's diaspora literature. It's literature, watch this, where they tell their story for themselves instead of allowing somebody else to tell their story for them. I guess y'all don't want to roll with me right now, but please understand that you never will see Jewish people allowing Hitler's people to teach their children about who they are and where they come from. I guess y'all not feeling this right now. And a lot of us have, uh, have made the mistake of allowing Hitler to be responsible for the education of our children in this nation. A white supremacist education system is never ever going to give literature and a narrative and propaganda to our children other than a narrative that leaves them down, leaves them disinherited, leaves them dispossessed. Y'all still not feeling me? And so the chronicler says, I'm going to take this in my own hands and remix Kings and Samuel and tell the story to show how we got where we are. Uh-oh. Now that's what's up with the governor of Florida and the governor of this state. They are trying to remix history because they don't want us to understand why we are where we are because if we understand why we are where we are then we'll come to understand that black people are not at the bottom of every statistic that's positive because we're sorry and lazy it's because there's a history there's a system that has been designed to operate the way that it operates oh y'all not getting it Women are not second-class citizens because women are less than and not equal to. It's because when the founders of this nation decided to build, the, to build this democracy, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They did not include women either in the founding of this country. And that's why white women need to understand that whenever you side with white men. They never intended for you to be a first-class citizen in the first place. It's a system. How we got where we are. But then Judy says, it's not just how we get where we are, but how we can forge a new way forward. That's why DeSantis to Satan and a but don't want us to learn our history. They don't want you to know how we got where we are. Uh, can I make it plain? Uh, who is it? Carter Woodson. Carter Woodson says as he surveyed the distortions in curriculum in this nation, Carter Woodson said there would be no lynching if it didn't start in the classroom. Y'all came the wrong Sunday. You didn't think I was going to go there today? And, 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 and so understand, understand that here, here is the chronicler saying, I'm going to tell my own story. And maybe that's what we have to have enough sense to do. If you allow other folk to tell you your story, you always end up at the bottom. Be careful about the stories others tell you about you because they become the stories you say to you about you. And before you know it, you won't even be consistent with who you are because you want to buy into a story that ain't you. But as long as the story ain't you, if you can become like those who want to co-opt you before you know it you will change parties in the middle of your mayoral here you are from West Dallas the hood West 
Dallas where they contaminated the climate and many black folk died prematurely and yet you get in office and once you become mayor you decide you can't be who you are you got to get with folk trying to be like them because you're not secure in who you are but let me tell you something baby Bada, you can change parties but if you don't get your person together, eventually the party is going to let you know that your tan is too dark and you ain't one of them. What the mayor did was an act of political betrayal. He betrayed his community. But let's be real, it ain't like he, been, he ain't been acting like this. He just made official what he's been doing the whole time. That's what he's doing. And, 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 so, and so, so the chronicler says, even in Persia, I'm going to stay who I am. Even in Persia, I may be othered, I may be treated second class, but I'm going to tell my story and forge a new way forward. And that's all I came to tell us today. You tell your story yourself about yourself and watch God bless you to forge a brand new way forward. And now I love this because the text says in the midst of telling the story, the chronicler comes to the point where Solomon's dream comes true. Solomon's prayers are answered. The magnif magnificent, majestic structure of the temple, a house for God has been built. And the book lets us know God appears to Solomon at night. Let me park right there. At night, listen, in the Hebrew, the word night is figurative for adversity. You know I can't run past that because God has a way of showing up when we are in the midst of our adversity. Y'all didn't shout. I bless you to shout right quick. Sometimes God lets life go dark in order for us to receive the light of a revelation from God that we wouldn't have received had life not gone dark. You better preach for the hands. I just did. Because somebody is in a dark place. But it's in your dark place that God lets you see the light of divine revelation that you wouldn't have seen had you not been in that dark place. John testified, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Hold on. John is on the Isle of Patmos. He's banished on the Isle of Patmos, but that's where God comes to speak to him. Y'all didn't like John. Job talked to him. Job in chapter 38, verse 1, the Bible says, out of the whirlwind, God spoke to Job. God can use your whirlwind. God can use your thunderstorm. God can use your hurricane to get a word to you. And now, God says this, and this trips me out. God says, if I shut up the heavens and no rain comes, if I send a plague and locust darken the sky, so much so they hide the sun, and the excrement from the locust rain down on you. That's a real deal of what happens in that area. Uh, uh, if I send a pestilence, then he says, no, no, stop, stop, God, stop. If you do this, God, God does this? I'm going to wrestle with this. Let's wrestle with this Wednesday night, okay? Uh, but, but the chronicler is saying God does this kind of stuff. Right, right. I don't know how to make this nice. I can't fix this. So, so don't get upset with me, but I, I can't fix this. All I can say is this is the chronicler's theology. Okay. The chronicler sees God as the architect of all. I don't know what else to say. The chronicler says, in essence, God is sovereign, and God will sometimes send some stuff that don't feel good. I don't know how to clean this up. 
So please don't judge me if I'm not making you feel good right now. But let me keep it moving, okay? Because God then offers, watch this, a recipe for restoration. God says in the midst of the worst disaster, because that's the point I want to hang out with. Economically, a drought was devastating. Imagine in an agricultural culture not having any rain in the midst of a drought. It wipes everything out. Imagine locusts coming, devouring everything that you've worked hard for. They snatch it from you. They darken where you live. It's an ugly, hideous, nasty place to be. The locusts are doing their nasty stuff. And imagine living in that. But God says that ain't the end of the story. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal the land. I'm about to shout because out of the worst, negative, God can give you a beautiful picture. Okay, I love my subject, but it ain't original with me. Uh, Drake, Champagne Poppy. Uh, <laughs> y'all act like y'all just listen to gospel music all week long. Don't be judging me. Drake says, I learn working with negatives makes for better pictures. You can get some truth anywhere. Y'all trying to be all holy and pious. Like the only thing you do is read the Bible and listen to gospel music. Drake puts it this way. I learned working with negatives makes for positives. Watch what Drake is saying. Drake is using a photography metaphor. In photography, you recognize old school photographers. I think you know about this, Sterling. And that is you have this old school 35 millimeter camera. Inside is film that's called negatives. What do you do with the negatives? You take them to a dark room, but it's in the dark room that the negatives get developed. And before you know it, you have a picture that you wouldn't have had had you not been in a dark room and used some negatives. You better preach champagne, Poppy, because somebody today is in a negative place and you're in a dark room, but God uses dark rooms rooms to develop negatives to give you a picture you wouldn't have had had you not been in that dark room. Is that the Bible, Freddie Haynes? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations knowing the dark room is developed and you develop endurance and strength. Come here, Paul. Paul puts it this way. In a dark room, here's your dark room shout. We glory in tribulation because tribulation produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope never disappoints. I hope somebody gets that today. So, so, let me run through this because I've held you too long. It just got good to me. Missed y'all last Sunday and, and this pulpit is still on fire from what my girl did last Sunday. So, so, I'm dancing around, trying to dance around the embers, but, but watch this. Watch this. If my people call by my name, I love this first piece because it's basically saying that to develop uh, beautiful pictures from dark negatives, number one, oh, this is so good. I'm not going to shout. I'm going to say it slow and low because if I raise up, I'm going to run out. Here it is. 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 Developing beautiful pictures from dark negatives takes place when you reconnect with whose you are. Watch this. God says, if my people called by my name. When you reconnect with whose you are, in the midst of your nasty negative situation, God says, if my people called by my name, y'all, that, 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 that's 
the shout right there that God says, y'all may have messed up. You may be in a dark place, but if my people called by my name, my people, because in this life, please don't miss this. It's important to know who you are, but it must be in the context of knowing whose you are. Because if you know who you are without a sense of whose you are, you may be mistaken about who you are. But when you know who you are in light of whose you are, then you'll discover that the best way to know what you are created for is to be connected to your creator. If you want to know what you're made for, you better know your maker. And so you need to re reconnect with whose you are. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, uh, when you get a chance, read, what is it, uh, Acts 27? Acts 27 is kind of mind blowing because Acts 27, Paul is on a ship as a captive, but then out of nowhere, a storm breaks out. And when the storm broke out, Paul testified that they thought they had given up hope that they would ever make it. But then all of a sudden, while everybody's panicking, Paul gets up and says, y'all chill. The captive becomes the captain. And Paul says, God will elevate you in a storm. God, you, oh, oh, oh my God. I, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Here it comes. Your problem ain't a problem. It's a path to your promotion. even know who that's for because that wasn't in my sermon but somebody needs that word your problem ain't just a problem it's a pathway to a promotion that you wouldn't have received had you not had that problem through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus through it all I've learned to trust in God if I never had a problem I would know God could solve them I would know what faith in God could do that was free. That, that ain't in the sermon, but that was, that was good. So watch this, watch this. I love this because, because Paul is on this ship in a storm, stands up and says, y'all chill. He goes, Kendrick, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. They can't see the sun, stars, or moon. But in the darkness, he says, we're going to be all right. He says, last night... An angel of the Lord, who, whose I am. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. All right, V, I got to talk to you because they're not feeling me right now, okay? He said, he's in the, get the picture. It's dark, storm is raging, it's a hurricane. The ship is being tossed. Paul the captive takes over and says, last night, an angel of the Lord, Whose I am. And whom I serve talked to me and said, the ship ain't going to make it, but we are. Wait, what? The ship ain't going to make it, but we're going to be all right. And then he says, and I believe God. A whole lot of folk believe in God. It's easy to believe in God. James says even devils believe in God and they tremble. But it's one thing to believe in God. It's another thing to believe God. Anybody believe God? When God says all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according. Anybody believe God? When God says I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of folk that can't stand you. Anybody Anybody believe God? Paul says, I believe God because of whose I am. Let me, let me do this because I, I just got you. I, 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 I just got to do this. So you know what? Uh, it went viral, I guess about a week and a half ago. Something that happened last year in Ireland. Ireland. In Ireland, some gymnasts 
are receiving their medals. And it's, it's, it's all white girls and one black girl. And so the person giving out the medals, here's what she does. She goes to get the medal. White girl, white girl, white girl, white girl. Here's a sister. White girl, white girl, white girl. And just passed her over. You didn't see that? It's, it's, check it out. It's, it's, it went viral. Check it out, okay? Little girl, what, nine years old? And, and, and she gets passed over in front of everybody. My heart broke for her. The trauma of being dissed because of how God made you. This world is sick. Anybody that disses you because of how God made you, their problem ain't you, it's God. And, and she passed over, passed over her, passed over her. But all, y'all know God has the last word. Because, because, because her gymnast Shiro is Simone Biles. And when Simone Biles saw what happened, Simone went to looking for her. And Simone reached out to her, reached out to her family. And y'all, they say she couldn't even believe it. It was Simone Biles on the other end of the phone call. Simone Biles is encouraging and lifting her up. Simone Biles is letting her know, I see you. Even when other folk overlook you, Simone Biles is giving her all this good stuff. And guess what? Y'all know she got a black mama. And her black mama said to the media and this made me shout the media when the media asked her what happened the black woman then said Ireland gave a, a sorry apology but guess what my daughter knows who she is and because she knows whose she is God gave her an award that's bigger than the medal that they tried to deny her because none of them other girls got to talk to Simone Biles they admire Simone but Simone Simone called my baby because she still knows whose she is. Other folk may overlook you. Other folk may walk by you. But if you know whose you are, God will bless you in ways they can't stop. Reconnect with whose you are. After you reconnect with whose you are, reposition to where you should have been if my people I really I'm not I'm not giving you enough time on this but if my people called by my name I wish I could run with that because it means God's name is on you and since God's name is on you God's name yeah that's on you. Elohim, that's on you. El Elyon, that's on you. El Shaddai, that's on you. Jehovah Shalom, that name is on you. If my people called by my name, here it is, humble themselves. And the word means to bend the knee. It's almost as if you're in the presence of, a, of sovereign royalty and you, um, you, you don't just walk in any kind of way. You humble yourself because there's a protocol being in the presence of royalty. Humble themselves and pray. The most, the most used word in the Hebrew for prayer is the word used right here. Humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Turn, turn. So, so your wicked ways are here, but you turn from them and seek face us metaphor for presence of God seek the presence of God to live always in God's presence to seek God's presence if my people humble themselves pray pray as if your life depends on it turn from your wicked ways why because you cannot pray high and live low Uh, oh, I do this. I do this. Don't judge me. So, so I was, I was on a plane and I should have been reading cause you know, I'm in a PhD program. I'm, I know all this stuff. So I should have been reading, but, but I'm going through what they have to offer to show and they have boomerang. 
And, and, and Vince, I had to watch Boomerang. So, so I watched Boomerang, and I think it may have been the spirit, Irie, because I got a sermon. Eddie Murphy plays this character, suave, debonair, a honey magnet. And, 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 and so Eddie Murphy, uh, but he messes over the honeys. And then all of a sudden, here comes Robin Gibbons' character. And Robin Gibbons' character lets him know that you better be careful who you play, player. Because even players get played. Robin, gives him, Robin Gibbons plays him, but, but Halle Berry, Halle Berry, uh, Halle Berry, uh, Halle Berry. Oh, y'all ain't heard that song either, so man, yeah. All right, so, 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 so. It's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Allow me some leeway, okay? So, 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 so Halle Berry, Halle Berry is playing his other character, and, and so, so he, 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 he gets with Halle for a minute, but then Robin invites him out, and they do it. And uh, so, so, but, but, but after, after, you know, it's, 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 it's Frankie Bever, Beverly, after the morning, after, after the morning. <laughs> All right, so after the morning, after, like, he wakes up, and, and he says, because he, Robin says, what's wrong with you? I just realized I'm in love. She said, with Halle's character? And he said, yeah. And she says, well, what are you doing here? He says, exactly. He gets up and goes to Halle and has to go through a lot because, you know, if you mess over a sister, you're going to have to pay a price for a while. You, you can't just walk up back in there like everything is fine and say, I'm sorry. No, you're going to have to. Sisters, don't be looking at me like I'm making this stuff up. Brothers, at least y'all should be helping me out right here. And so, and so, but here it is. Here it is. Once he recognized where he shouldn't have been, no, once he recognized where he should have been and who he should have been with, he could no longer stay where he was, even where, it, where he was made him temporarily feel good. He gets up from there and goes to get with Hallie. Now, if Eddie can do that to get with Hallie, and Hallie do be fine, what should we do when we think about how fine God is, how good God is? God says, well, what you doing there when you ought to be over here? Here it is, I'm done. I'm done. So you reconnect with whose you are, uh, reposition to where you should be, and then finally the text says this, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. I got to do this, and then I'll quit. Please note, and I, and I, just, just, just go with this, okay? Please understand that God is speaking about a nation and not simply individuals. A lot of folk get mad at me because they're saying you're always dealing with social issues. Why are you so social? Why are you so political? Why are you dealing with social stuff and not spiritual stuff? First of all, because in the African context, there is no dichotomy between the spiritual and the social. Because God is one, and since God made it all, then here's the deal. If God ain't in my politics, I shouldn't be in politics. If God ain't in my social life, I should not be in social. So, so the spiritual ain't divorced from the secular in the African context, which is the biblical context. So, so, hear me lovingly. Hear me lovingly. This text, if you want to fully apply it, apply it to this country. If my people, because y'all claim to be my people, uh, you even put me on your money. In God we trust. But you don't handle your money like you trust me. You handle your money from a disposition of scarcity 
and not abundance. And so as a consequence, what scarce goes up and it never goes down. And if my people called by my name are going to humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, God is saying to America what King said, and that is we need a revolution of values. How sick of this is this country when we elect people who literally have the government being held hostage because they're playing political games because they want to make a point over in Congress. Don't y'all like Jasmine Guy? Because Jasmine went in on them. Jasmine let them have it. If y'all want to see where some real crimes and misdemeanors are, then why don't you look at these pictures right here? Evidence that the president that y'all refused to indict, the president that y'all refused to convict, he has in his own residence papers that are highly classified and that is illegal. Y'all mad about y'all mad about Biden's son, but you're not mad about that. What you ought to be mad about is the fact that we are about to shut the government down because y'all playing games. God ain't in this. This country has lied on God for so long because if you was really about God, you know that God is preoccupied with the poor and you wage war on the poor instead of liberating the poor. This country ain't serious about God. This country tries to play God. Okay, okay, okay. Here it is, here it is. Here it is, because uh, I know what's going on, and I'm feeling it, and y'all feeling me, and I love y'all for that. Uh, y'all are saying, hold on, but Wayne, uh, you left Wayne on his back in a storm. And some of y'all want to shout, but you're trying to figure out what happened to Wayne on his back in a storm. Let me quit and give y'all what happened to Wayne. Here it is, Marsha. Wayne is on his back in a storm, and guess what Wayne does? Wayne says, Freddie, I started hollering, help! <laughs> Don't judge him. What you gonna do? Just lay there and act all sophisticated? When your butt is hurting and you in a storm, you better know how to cry out. You better let, uh, what, what's the sister say? Sister says, if you don't if you don't say ouch when you in pain, they'll kill you and make you act, and act like you enjoyed it. He said, help! And the more he cried out, all of a sudden the tour guide who was leading the tour yelled out, Wayne, where are you? Wayne said, over here! He said, Wayne, keep hollering because I'm going to follow your voice to get where you are. So you keep on hollering and every now and then we got to keep on hollering because if we keep on hollering. I got some ancestors who will testify. I, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He kept on hollering and because he kept on hollering they found Wayne. They brought Wayne back to the United States and when they brought Wayne back home, Wayne gets home and Wayne decides, you know what? I got to develop my film from the stuff from the uh, trip I just took. And Deb, here's what he does. He literally goes into a dark room, develops the film and discovers there were pictures he did not take because when he fell down, the camera kept on clicking and it took some pictures of the sun rays bursting through some dark clouds and forming a rainbow. His wife said, baby, that's the most beautiful picture I've ever seen. He said, well, baby, I didn't take it. I fell down and the camera kept on clicking. And she said, I'm going to show this around. National Geographic got a hold of it and they hired him and he began working for National Geographic from a picture he didn't even take. He just happened to fall back and the rain came down. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Is there anybody here who is falling down and the storm is raging? If the storm is raging, God is still clicking. Click on God. 
Christ. Because if God keeps on clicking, you can testify with my classmate, Paul Jones, who said, I've had some good days. I've had some tears to cry. But when I look around and think things over, all my good days outweigh my bad days. serve a God. I serve a God who can give you beautiful pictures out of your dark negatives. And I want to pray right now because someone is in the house or you're online. And let's be real. The negatives have gotten so dark. You're wondering if you're going to make it. I serve a God who is so good. God specializes in using negatives as transportation to get you to a positive and purpose that you wouldn't have gotten to without that negative. And so, for somebody in a dark place, for somebody struggling, let me tell you something, God is faithful. God loves you. I trust in God. God cares for you. God cares for me. And so we're going to pray, but, but before I do that, if you're here, this text lets you know how you can be restored. I didn't even get into all of it, but God will forgive your sins. And here, here, here's the meaning of the word. It means set you free set you free. Isn't that awesome right there? God will set you free from the you in you that causes you to keep getting in the way of you. God will forgive, set you free. If you want to be free, set free, and then God will heal the land. Heal the land. That land that has been scorched by drought, God will heal. That land overtaken by locusts, God will heal the land. God will heal you, heal you, free you. So, so, so you want to be restored? God is so good. God sets you up to restore you. So if you're online, dial that number 469-498-0210. Email us, join us at friendshipwest.org. We've got ministers of the gospel who will pray for you. And today is the beginning of a new life for you, where you are restored, where your dark negatives will take you to a beautiful picture. That's, that's the good news. But now you in the house and your thing is, you know what? Yeah, God is speaking and I need to respond. If you've come to church today and you know good and well that you need to get your life straight with God, you know good and well, it's time for you to turn from wicked ways, turn from ways that take you wrong, and turn to God. Get in God's presence. If that's you, won't you right now stand up, step out, come on down. Give your life to Christ. Do it right now. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Somebody else, come on. Somebody else, somebody else. I'm so glad you came. Thanks for your courage because some of y'all out there, you were waiting to see if it was the right time and blood just came down to let you know, yeah, it's the right time. So don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't vacillate. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Jesus Christ. I see y'all coming. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Somebody else, come on. Give your life to Christ. You're here and you know it's time to get your life straight with God. Reconnect with whose you are. 
You want to reconnect with who you are? Come on, stand up, step out. Come on down. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Do it right now. Reconnect with who you are. Do it right now. Do it right now. Come on, come on, come on. God is speaking. God's spirit is moving. Somebody else, somebody else. Here's the deal. Your thing is, preacher, I like that part, but here's my deal. I got that part right. I feel God leading me to join church. I'd like to join this church. Listen, we'd love to have you. I see you coming, sis. Bless your heart. We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. We want you in our church family. And so if you're here and you feel led to join church, do it right now. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Join church. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't vacillate. Wherever you are, wherever you are, balcony, risers, main floor, come on down. Join church. Do it right now. Come join church. Somebody else, your deal is this, preacher, I used to go to church, but I stopped going. I really feel led to get back in church. Listen, it is right to be in church. It's wrong to be out. Why don't you come on down and get back in church? Stand up, step out, come on down and get back in. Preacher, here's my deal. I just moved to Dallas, Fort Worth from another area. I got a church home back there, but now I live here, work here, go to school here. I want a church home here. If that's you, stand up, step out, come on down, join church. Do it right now. Today is your day. Now is your time. Listen. Choir's getting ready to sing. When they sing, I'm going to ask all of us to stand. When we stand, that's your signal. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't vacillate. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Reconnect with whose you are. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Do it right now. Y'all ready? Shall we come stand? And won't you come right now? Y'all sing. All right. I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights But when I, when I look around Church all of my good days, they outweigh my, my bad days, and I, 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 I won't complain, for God, he's been so good to me. More than you or this whole world could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. He, he dried all my tears away. Church, don't you know that the Lord will do that for you? The turn, turn your midnights in the day. So I, I'll just say thank you, Lord. I'll say thank you, Lord. I'll say thank you, Lord. Your bills may be due. Don't know what the money's coming from, but thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your body may be sick. You may be wrecking with pain. But we'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I won't complain. Instead of complaining, I put my trust in you, God. Instead of complaining, I put faith in you, God. Instead of complaining, I'm gonna believe you, God. You said if I seek your face, turn from my wicked ways, you'll kill from heaven, you'll kill the sin, 
and you heal the land. Oh Lord, I trust in you, God. Somebody on a truck auto today. I said, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. still speaking God's spirit is moving don't you want this God in your life God won't let me quit the invitation because of you and you know who you are you know where you are I tried to stop because this has been good but you're out there and you wrestling with God here is the deal if you wrestling with God going back and forth should I should not let me tell you something if you wrestling with God you better not win because if you win you lose best thing to do is say God have your way and if God has God's way in your life that's when you live your blessed life and so so you're out there God is waiting on you the spirit is speaking to you I want you right now to know we're waiting on you won't you come give your life to Christ join church you know who you are come on right now risers balcony main floor Come on right now. Saul, give us one more time. Okay, one more. One more. Saul's going to yeah. Come on. Say thank you, Lord. I'll, I'll just say thank you, Lord. In spite of what may be going on right now, I, I'm going to lift my hands and say thank you, Lord. Even though my world may not be in the best situation, God, I'm going to trust you and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I won't complain. Oh, God has been good to me. More than the world could ever be. He's been good to me. He dried my tears away. Turned me night into day. So oh, I. God, thank you for new life in Christ. Thank you for community connection. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of these, your children. You know who they are, where they are, what they're dealing with. Now, in Jesus' name, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Order their lives in your word. Use us as their family to love on them, to care for them, edify them that they might become all that you would have them to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah.
Please go with our uh, uh, ministers. They're going to share with you. Yes, please go with our ministers. They're going to share with you. Come on, y'all. Let's praise God for our new family. Our new family. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't this awesome? Ain't this beautiful? I love it. I love it. I love it. Let me share this with you, and we're going to get ready to go. We're going to get ready to go. Here's the deal. We got some more people. Oh, my God. Welcome home. Welcome. Look at God. God ain't even done. I just love this. I just love it. I just love it. I just love it. Yeah. Thank you. Listen, I want to share something with you. Uh, let me have this down. I want to share this with you, and we're getting ready to go. Uh, this was in my sermon. I just got too happy to give it to you. And so uh, I'm going to give you what, what I wanted to give you, but I was too happy. So, so Solomon has constructed this temple. And in the context, God has said, I want you to bring my offerings to this temple. Check out the offerings they brought. They brought the burnt offering. The burnt offering was for atonement of sin, an expression of I'm devoted to God. The second offering was the grain offering, voluntarily saying I'm devoted to God while recognizing how good God is and the providence of God in my life. What I have is because God provided it. Then there was the shalom or the peace offering which included thanksgiving offerings. Sometimes you give just to say thank you. Free will offerings, wave offerings. And the fourth was what? Sin offering. Offering of atonement for unintentional sin. And then the final one was the guilt offering. Uh, but the idea is that they brought their offerings to God. And I think I shared with you last month from that Pro uh, Proverbs piece that they came in singing from Deuteronomy about what God had done. So when I, when, I, when I give God my tithe offering, I'm basically reflecting on how good God has been to me throughout my life. Okay? So today we're asking every member of the church to tithe. This is Trust Try God Sunday, All Tithe Sunday. I'm, I'm pleading with you for your own good. Try God. Give God that tenth off the top. That saying, God, you're first in my life. Try God. God says, you try me, trust me. I open up windows of heaven and blow your mind. That's the Freddie Haynes remix. So I'm asking you, please, every member, would you try God today? Give God that tenth off the top. Off tithing is an opportunity for you to move in faith and let God be God in every aspect of your life, including your resources. And here's your shout. And to then operate in discipline with the remaining 90. Okay? So I'm asking us to please, let's all do our part, okay? Now, there's some folk who left early, so I'm asking you to give for them too, okay? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so please, let's prepare now to give. You can give, of course, by texting to give, FWBC972. 209419. You know how to do that. And then you can scan the QR code and give that way. You give through the GiveLify app. Download it. If you don't have it, search out Friendship West, safe vehicle. And of course, there's an online through our website, friendshipwest.org slash give or yeah, slash give and our FWBC app or old school envelope. And all those ways you can give in a liberal and loving fashion. All right. I want to pray. God, thank you so much for the gift of giving. Thank you so much for the way you bless us. Thank you so much for taking care of us. The fact that we can trust you. The fact that we really ain't got no complaints because you've been good to us. Now take these offerings and bless them in a very special way. Bless the gift and use these gifts that through them we, O oh God, will be responsible as a church and responsive to the needs of humanity. Use us as a church to not only save souls, 
but redeem community, save this nation, impact this world. So use these gifts to do that. And then God, I pray in a special move that you will bless every giver, bless them in ways that blow their minds. And as you do that, oh God, may they know it came from you. Those who want to give but just don't have it, please bless them. You're God, you're good, you're able. And I place them in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. All right, so please let's give. If you have an envelope, we'll give on the way out. Uh, I ain't got no announcements. That's beautiful, okay. So uh, uh, let's do this. Uh, one, yeah, yeah, we're doing birthdays right now. I know your birthday is this month, all right? It's October, all right? So uh, you were born in October. What a, what a month. I kind of like this month. This is a great month. It's a great month. So if you were born in October, we want to show you love. I think T has a birthday today. T, stand up. All October, stand up. Stand up. It's your birthday. We're going to praise them like it's your birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We love you. We thank God for you. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for giving us life. For those born this month, I pray that this will be a special month, a blessed month that will propel them into their blessed year yet. God bless them. Keep them as they live on purpose. Walk in your will to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy birthday to you. Listen, you got married this month. Everybody who got married in October, please stand. Got married in October. You got married in October? Ain't that awesome? That is so beautiful. Do you know what this month is? It's your anniversary. So guess what? We pray for you. We thank God for you. God, in Jesus' name, bless these couples. Marry this month. Bless their love. Bless their life. May they, oh God, experience a renewal, a rebirthing of their love. And may they have an amazing month that leads them into an even better year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. All right. Choir, y'all sang. Y'all did that. Thank you. All right. Let's raise up out of here. All right. All right. So y'all have an amazing week. It's good to see y'all. It's really good to see y'all. Y'all look good. You look good. Thank you, dear. Good to see y'all. Love y'all very much. Y'all have a great week. And, uh, Wednesday, we're going to break down further the scripture, okay, from today, okay? Hey, you look good. Girl. Good to see you. All right? Receive God's benediction on your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you. Grant you peace. Go now in the power. God's Holy Spirit. Knowing God can take them dark negatives and create a beautiful picture. In Jesus' name. Hey. We praise God for this impactful experience and for your joining us during it. Check us out on social media and please like, share, and subscribe at Friendship West. Then go to www.friendshipwest.org to find out more about this marvelous movement. Find out how to participate through sharing your prayers, sharing your offerings or monetary gifts, or sharing and investing your time volunteering with this difference-making ministry. For you who are viewing as visitors, you can share that you are here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. For those who want to, this time that you are visiting to be the last time that you are a visitor, 
you can become part of our fabulous family of faith, either by calling 469-498-0210 or by emailing join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, we look forward to hearing from you. We're so excited that you are here. Until next time, blessings on you. Friendship West Baptist Church.